What's happening guys, Chris and GG here and today we are profiling Ian Robb and Joe Rittiger's first place and top 8 Collinsville Regional Zoroark Glissopod deck profile. This deck is very spicy, it's got um, ratios and techs outside the norm because it won the whole event via Ian Robb and came top 8 via Joe Rittiger so it's going to be spicy. So let's talk about the individual card choices and basically why this deck is so cool and why you should consider it going forward. So let's start off with the Pokemon. We have four Zerua and three Zorark GX, only three. Um, cuts had to be made basically for the uh, techs he had to play. So I'm guessing one Zorark GX was the cut to make room for the next cards we're talking about is Fomantis times two. Uh, search your deck for grass energy, attach it to one of your Pokemon, so that just gives the deck energy acceleration. But let's not lie to ourselves, it is in here to evolve into this Lorantis promo. Sunny day, all, all of your grass and fire type Pokemon do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. And the 20 damage is so much because you are attacking with this buddy. This is Galissapod. Usually, with first impression, he would be doing 120 ideally um, via Acerola or Guzma or a Floatstone Retreat. Um, it maxes out at 150 with a choice band because we don't play Kukui in this deck, or well, not usually. We usually don't play Kukui in the deck, so it maxes out at 150 of a choice band. However, if you have one more Lorantis, just the one. That means Glissapod is taking out KOs on Tappy Lele GX without the need of committing a crossing cut GX. So that means in the late game you do have a win condition. Uh, you can guzzle out the Glissapod and Tappy Lele to take the KO as long as one Lorandus and a choice band is uh, in your possession. Which is just really, really good. It allows you, uh, Glissapod to hit levels that it was not usually hitting before. However, if you do have two Lorantis on the bench, first impression is going up to 190, which means it is taking the, the, the knockouts on the very tanky Buzzwall GX and other uh, GX basic Pokemon around the same level. If you're playing Professor Kukui, that is 210. It is maxing out on. Um, however, if you are playing Kukui, it means that getting Glissapod into the act of use first impression becomes quite difficult because it's usually via Guzma and Acerola but that is just really really good that means first impression is really hitting higher numbers uh, so it means you're not just two shotting each time with the deck you are actually one shotting things and um, puts armor press up to 170 as well max and it means that you don't get hit that hard next time but crossing cut goes all the way up to uh, 210 max with a choice band and two uh, Lorantis on the bench, which is just huge. Uh, sorry, 220, 220 max. So that means it's taking out Galissapods, it's taking out Zoroarks. It is just one shotting a lot of really important things. So that's why the Lorantis promo is actually a really strong tech in this deck. So we're playing um, two of that for the reasons that I just talked about. Three Tappy Lele, one uh, Tappy Coco for the free retreat. And one MUX because we all know how good MUX is against Wuzzwool. Um, they charge up the energies and you knock it down for one energy, mimicking either a first impression or a riotous beating. Moving on to the trainers, he is playing the one Cynthia, the three Guzma, the two Acerola. Uh, two Acerola or the Acerola count could be considered quite low, uh, given how important Acerola is to the stack, but he's only playing two. Uh, three Bridget, one Mallow. We know how good Mallow is as Zorark deck. Nothing really to say there. Three N. It seems the N count is higher uh, in the Zorark decks uh, compared to other decks. And Cynthia came in. Um, I'm guessing uh, N is just that good of a um, um, distributing card or disruption card, and you get uh, trade anyway. So even in the late game, N is not bad. Two second more that is high for a Zorar count, um, but he did play two. As I was talking about before, he did play for Fresh Cookaway. I did forget about this when I was talking about it, but he does play it, which just means Glissopod math gets higher and higher and higher, which is just really good. Uh, three fuel blower, tar, tar, turn off Garbatoxin to get rid of Fight Fury builds, so it means you are taking knockouts on the Buzzwell GX, which is very important. Uh, for Ultra Ball standard, for Puzzle Time standard, and something not so standard is a two choice band, two floatstone. Thanks to floatstone, you can actually maneuver um, the Glissapot out of the active to use Professor Kukui on your turn. So that is 
that is pretty good. Um, so we played two of them, and lastly for the energy, he played four DCE and four grass, uh, bringing a total of eight energy altogether. So let me know what you think of this deck, guys. I think this is really good. I think Lorantis has a spot in the Glissapod deck because, as I explained, the numbers it hits are so crucial and so important. Um, but overall, I'd love to hear what you think about this deck. Uh, well deserved winner, winner. Well done to Ian Robb and Joe Rudiger for their topping at the Collinsville Regional. Please check out our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. If you play any of our card games, check out those YouTubes. But for now, this is Chris from NCG, signing out.